The Suicide Prevention Week really is a result of people coming together and no longer walking away from this very real reality that faces so many people within our country, including myself. My family dealt with suicide um, when I was just a young boy. I was in eighth grade when my brother Tom died by suicide. And that created such a terrible wake of grief within the family. We had to live with that for years without the benefit of you know, coming together as church, coming together as uh, neighbors, coming together uh, even in the psychological field because it was a time when you just didn't talk about it. That was in the 70s. You didn't talk about this reality. My brother Tom, as I said, died uh, when he was when I was in eighth grade, and he was about 19. Um, my sister Therese also died by suicide when I was in the seminary. I was a junior in the seminary at the University of San Diego, and we were absolutely devastated as a family because we were waiting for my sister Therese and her husband to come for Thanksgiving. So everything was ready, the table was set, and they were the last to arrive, or so we thought. Sadly, that didn't happen. Neither made it. My sister Therese died the day before, and her husband, after being told about the suicide, um, was to tell my parents, but he never could get to that place, and uh, died by suicide as well. So we were confronted with this harsh reality on Thanksgiving Day. It was hard for us to be thankful. And at the same time, we were blessed by people within our parish community, the pastor and the associate pastor and our women religious, who were there to walk with us and accompany us. And ultimately, that is what I want. I want people to know that the church is here to accompany those who are survivors of suicide loss, to let them know that they're not alone in this, and that they have a place at the table and we should be there for them. When my sister Therese died by suicide uh, and her husband, again, we were having to deal with this horrible encounter with with death but also with suicide and all of the troubles that go with that and I found it was it really difficult for me when all of a sudden people were whispering and saying things about my own mental health and wondering about whether I was going to be able to carry on in life and I remember after hearing some people say certain things about my ability to, say, be class president and things like that, and they voted not to have me as a class president, for that reason, that infuriated me. And I remember going out to the end of the University of San Diego campus and just yelling at God, just giving God everything that I had, all of my anger, all of my tears and just saying, is this the way I'm gonna live? Where people are going to simply deal with um, this person who may have the same struggles or the same mental disorders. Is this gonna define me for the rest of my life? And I was angry. I, I, that was an important moment in my life. It actually helped me to then have a better conversation but even there, it wasn't um, a game changer. I still buried a lot, and I wanted to just continue to move forward. Uh, when I became a priest, that was different. Uh, after about three or four years, I really started to struggle. My own sister had attempted suicide again. I had a brother who had uh, struggled with mental disorder for a number of years, number of years, continues to struggle with that. But when my younger sister was looking at the possibility of, of death, premature death, 
that really hit me hard because I loved her. I do. I still do. And thankfully, she's a survivor. But that put me in a spiral and in Great Depression. And I really wondered uh, what would happen to this guy? What would happen to John? That was scary. It was a very, very scary moment. And it challenged my, my vocation. It challenged my sense of identity. Who was I in relation to the church? Who was I in relation to God? Who was I in relation to my brothers and sisters and to my friends? I just, and then to myself, I just didn't know who I was. Uh, if you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're going. And I had buried so much that I just never really looked into growing as I should have grown. And that's why I say again that a death by suicide is, is grave matter because it does affect people around us, including an eight-year-old boy who finally had to deal with it as an adult. And so I did, and I went for counseling. I, um, for the first time, really, in a robust way. And I started talking to spiritual direct, my spiritual director in a robust way on this very matter. Um, continued to meet with support group and friends. And just, I, I said from then on, I will not not talk about this. I have to talk about this. Losing a loved one is very hard. When we lose a loved one through suicide, it's doubly difficult for us. I know that is true for me. It was hard for my family. It's hard for me. And we continue to survive. We continue to survive because we have a certain faith that God has not abandoned us. And he walks with us and those who have died by suicide. And we trust that our Lord is holding each and every soul who has gone before us, including those who have died by suicide, in the palm of his hand. And here I am as a bishop, and I'm able to kind of open it up a little bit more and invite other people to talk. Communication is everything. If we're not talking about it, if we're not communicating this hardship in life, we're going to bury it, and it's going to come out one way or another, and not in a healthy way. God is there to take all of my anger and my... Um, tears and my sadness and my frustration. Um, St. Catherine of Siena herself once said to God, um, you know, with friends like you, who needs enemies? <laughs> and she was a saint. I think the truth is that sometimes we can be frustrated with God. Truly, it's our own frustration. And God is so big, he can handle our all of our tears and our frustrations. He wants us to come to him. The church is there for them. We understand that suicide is not just some random act uh, uh, based on choice. It is a random act based on a whole host of mental um, troubles that a person is dealing with. And a lot of that is related to chemical imbalances. It's related to scientific things that we just did not know in the past. And now through fMRIs and really going through the clinical um, studies, we're able to see that a person really struggles, uh, you know, with mental health. And it's not a matter of mind over matter anymore. Because if the mind is affected, if there's something wrong with the brain, if there are holes in the brain, which we have discovered, if there is a lack of blood flow or oxygen flow in certain parts of the brain, that affects a person's mental um, health. And mental disorder is a part of that world. You didn't talk about this reality. And if someone died by suicide, there was something of a stigma. There was also a sense of shame uh, and truly a sense of doubt. And within the life of the church, there was an added sense of doubt because for a long while within the church, the history of the church, there was the question of where were those who had died by suicide 
there was a time within our church where we wouldn't even bury a person who died by suicide because there was a question about that person's soul. And over the years, the church has evolved to a, a better understanding of the human person primarily through psychology, through the study of science, the science of psychology. There was a day where we didn't have that ability to say, look under the hood of, of a person's mental uh, facility. Today we have that ability, and now we're able to look at levels of culpability when it comes to a person who struggles with mental health and a person who makes a decision uh, about suicide. We continue to say that suicide is grave matter because it leaves a lot of people in, in, in great despair when they lose someone that they love. The act itself is grave matter, but we also understand that the person who has had to deal with this or the family that has to um, embrace this harsh reality, um, that they're not alone anymore. And I think that's a very important thing that I bring to the table as a bishop and as one who is a survivor, a fellow survivor of suicide loss. If you feel shame or even guilt for the loss of a loved one by suicide, if this is a reality in your life, I want you to know that the church is here for you.